What's up guys, welcome back to another electric support video. Today we are talking about diagnosing a problem with your board. So if your board is experiencing any kind of issues, we're gonna go through all the steps you should take to try to figure out what exactly the problem is. These are the same steps we would walk our customers through and these are the same steps you should take before contacting support or your board manufacturer. So nine times out of 10, if someone messages me on Instagram or sends our support team a message, their board turns on but it doesn't actually run. So the main problem over half the time, it's just because the remote isn't paired. So this might sound obvious to you, but a lot of people assume that the remote will pair automatically. And in some cases it does, but most of the time you'll need to pair it yourself. So in this case, it turns on. And as you can see, the, the battery level indicator isn't doing anything. So what we need to do is actually pair the remote and this should solve our problems. In this case, so depending on what remote you're using, you may have different steps. So definitely check the product description of whatever remote you have and the instructions should be there. If not, you will have to reach out uh, to whoever your vendor is to get those. So in my case, you just hold down the power button until it starts flashing and then it'll, then the ESC is ready to be paired. And then in this case, turn the remote on and then using a paper clip, Hit the back button and there we go. Bam, there, now it is. So that was one mistake or one issue already solved. One thing to consider is that if you have a problem that has nothing to do with your remote, even if your remote is paired, it, your motor still might not spin. So to test, make sure that your remote is actually paired. In this case, this is the basic ESC remote. Um, if it is paired, you will see that there is a battery level indicator. So it actually shows that my battery needs to be charged a little bit. Um, another way to test is if you hold the brakes down, feel the resistance be added to the, the motor. So if you re release the brakes, the motor spins pretty freely. If you hold the brakes down, it obviously doesn't spin as well. So that's a, one other way to test if your remote is paired. So if you're 100% sure that your remote is not the problem, your remote's paired, you know for sure that's not the issue, then most likely it's now a voltage problem. So what I mean by that is, here, I'll actually show you. So here I have a 10S battery, a 10S ESC, and a 6355 motor. Now the good news is both of these things are 10S, so turn the power button on, turn on the remote, and since I've already paired it, there we go, it spins. But what happens if you were to plug in a 6S battery to a 10S ESC? This is actually a pretty common problem. This particular ESC comes in a 6S, 7S, and 10S version. So. Uh, in this case, again, I have a 10S battery, 10S ESC. The 10S ESC is expecting a 10S battery, so it works great. But what happens if you actually plug in a 6S battery? So here I have a 6S battery, a um, little bit smaller than the 10S version. But and nothing's gonna blow up if you do it wrong. It's just, it might confuse you while you're trying to set your board up. So here I have a 6S battery plugged into a 10S ESC. So the 10S ESC has no way of knowing what actual battery you've plugged into it. All it knows is it's expecting a 10S battery. So when it's met with a 6S battery, it reads the voltage and goes, that's not right. So I'll show you what I mean. Plug that in. And what you hear is a three beat warning, meaning that your, that your voltage is too low and it's gonna cut it off. So why it cuts it off, all it knows is that it's expecting a 10S battery. It's reading this voltage and goes, that's way too low. We're gonna damage your battery if we continue to draw from it. So we're gonna cut your battery off to save you from damaging your hardware. So that's what that's doing right now. Obviously it doesn't work, but if we use our trick and hold the brakes, it is actually working. So we know for sure our remote is paired, but it's not actually spinning. So now again, if we were to unplug this and plug in our 10S again and turn it all back on, there we go. So what happens though, if you have a 10S battery and a 10S ESC and you're still experiencing these problems? Well. And we'll get to that next. So before we dive into our batteries and figure out how to test those, I do want to mention our VESC user. So anyone who's using a VESC, obviously there's not a 6S, 10S version of this thing, but it is all software related. So if you're still getting these types of errors, you need to dive into the VESC tool and make sure that your battery cutoff is set to the proper voltage for your type of battery. Once you verify that your VESC settings are correct or that your ESC and your battery do match, we'll move on to testing your battery's health. Uh, to start though, we wanna make sure we fully charge our battery. Um, our batteries are not shipped to you fully charged. We actually ship them at a relatively low voltage. So to rule out that your battery is simply dead, we wanna make sure that we plug this in for a few hours until your charger actually reads a green light. Once you've done that, we will go ahead and we will test the battery. So to do that, we are going to use a voltage meter. So this is a simple multimeter. If you're serious about this hobby, we, I really, really recommend you getting one. I've left the, a link in the description below for a pretty cheap one. Um, 
you need to make sure that you're able to test the voltage of all your different components. So in this case, I did not charge my battery, but um, we're gonna read the voltage anyway. So I'm going to insert the probes into each end of the XT60 to get a voltage. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Uh, worst case scenario, you'll get a negative reading. So in this case, my battery is reading at 34 volts. So that's a healthy number, but it's not fully charged. So for a 10S battery, you wanna make sure that your battery is once it's fully charged, it reads 42 volts. Doesn't matter what battery you use. Once it's fully charged, it should read the same voltage that's listed right here on the back of your charger. So in this case, mine says 42. So after a couple hours of charging, this should also read 42, give or take a, a volt or so. But in this case, let's pretend that I did charge my battery and it was at 34 volts and that's just what it was at the end of charging. So now I need to make sure that my charger isn't a problem. So most of the time, if there's any kind of battery issues or battery voltage issues, it's actually just a bad charger. So to test the charger, we'll do a similar method here. We will turn on our voltmeter to DC reading, plug one of our probes into the center of the charger, the other on the side, and we are getting 42.1, so our charger is good. So that rules out our charger. Now most of the time though, that's where your flaw is gonna be if you have a problem with your battery. So we just wanna make sure that that voltage is very close to that 42 volts in the back, or if you're using like a 6S charger, it would be 25.2 volts. It'll list it on the back though if you're ever confused. Um, so there we go. So our charger's fine. Our battery, I know for a fact it is fine. So that one's fine. So if, you're, if all your voltages check out, then it's most likely an ESC issue. So if you have determined that the voltage coming out of your battery is not as expected, we usually have one of two issues. One is a bad charger, which I just explained to you how to test your charger and make sure that's not a problem. Most of the time, that's the issue. But if it's not, then the other issue that's likely is that your battery is no longer balanced. Uh, what that means is that, so each of these packs uh, have multiple cells inside. Um, in this case, this is just a really small 10S 1P pack, so there's 10 different cells in here. Um, when you charge this whole thing to 42 volts, uh, that means each of those 10 cells are charged to 4.2 volts. Now let's pretend that maybe one of your cells is a little higher than the rest of them. As soon as one cell hits 4.2 volts, if the other nine aren't quite there yet, the BMS will stop charging to prevent that one cell from being overcharged, which can obviously uh, pose a potential fire issue. So that's the beauty of the BMS, is it cuts it off prior to any kind of issue like that. But what that means is that you may not be able to charge your battery fully. So to fix that, you would have to open your battery pack up and charge each of those groups separately, which is definitely a pain. But that is a reality of, of, it's rare, but it is a reality of battery packs. So that's the other issue. So if that's the issue, then you definitely wanna reach out to your uh, vendor where you got your battery pack from. So a common mistake a lot of people make when they are setting up their vest for the first time is mapping their throttle when they don't have to or not mapping their throttle when they do have to. So if you're using a UART cable, you do not have to do any kind of throttle mapping. But if you are using a PPM cable, you do have to map your throttle. Um, so that way that your vest understands when your throttle is pushed forward and when it is pushed backwards. Otherwise, it doesn't really know what state your remote is actually in. So that's why the throttle mapping is important. But when you're using UART, it doesn't require that. It's a different type of signal and it just knows right away what it is. So. Hopefully that makes sense and make sure you're keeping an eye on that. And we do go more in depth on that in the VEST tutorial. So definitely click the link in the description if you wanna see more in depth look at actually the whole pro uh, programming process of a VEST. But depending on what VEST you are using, the pinouts might be a little bit different. So with a UART port, uh, when you plug in the UART cable to your receiver, uh, the RX or receiver and TX or transmitter cables might be in a different place. So you wanna make sure that the TX pin is going to the TX pin on your receiver and the RX pin is going to the RX pin on your receiver. If they are swapped, it may not work. One more thing I do wanna leave you guys with, if you're using a dual VESC or dual ESC setup and you're experiencing randomly after your build's already been done, while you've been riding your board a while, if one of your motors goes out, how do you know if it's a motor problem or an ESC problem? Well, there's a pretty easy way of testing. So you'd wanna plug your, your setup in exactly how it was, figure out which motor isn't working. Let's pretend it's this front one that's not working. If you unplug everything, swap the phase wires and plug it all back in, is it the same motor that's not working again or did the issue switch to the other motor? If the same motor isn't working, then it's definitely a motor problem, which is very rare. Motors are very resilient and pretty much tank, that's the, most, like, the strongest thing in your whole build. Um, usually not, a, not the issue. Um, but if, it's, if it does switch sides to your other motor, then you know for sure that the one common denominator here is that one side of your 
ESC or VESC. So you know that one side of your VESC doesn't work. So that will tell you pretty much whether it's a motor or ESC problem and help you narrow down which is the, which is the cause. So that is pretty much it. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about how to troubleshoot your boards, how to figure out what the issue is quicker so you can get the replacement parts faster and get your boards back on the road. So if you guys have any troubleshooting tips you guys wanna share, please leave them in the comment section below. Help out your fellow builders, get their boards back on the road faster. And if you have any questions about this video, also drop them in the comment section below. We are very active down there. We'll be happy to answer your questions and hit the links in the description. So I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.